Is there one common question that you see coming up all the time with people when they ask about Crashlytics? Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Take one, Mark. How's it going, Firebase developers? Welcome to another episode of Ask Firebase, the show where we answer your burning Firebase questions. I'm Jen Person, your host, and today my co-host is Shobit Chug, and Shobit works on Crashlytics. Yeah. Welcome to the show. Thank you. You ready to answer some questions? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Let's do it. Mohammed on Twitter wants to know if anyone knows how to close all issues at once. <laughs> it looks like they have hundreds of them. What a pain entering and closing them one by one. Yeah, unfortunately, um, uh, that's, that's something that's not possible right now. So you're gonna have to close them one by one. We definitely, it's a request that we have or that we might address at some point. Uh, I would also ask, why are you closing hundreds of issue? Is it for historical purposes? Like for, is there some specific workflow you're looking to close? Uh, just examine your workflow and see if they can be closed more frequently. That's a really good call out. Um, yeah, it's sort of, I, I see this as twofold. One is it, if you could close them all at once, that's great, but also you might miss something that's important. Yeah, so also keep in mind that there's two kinds of closing. So you can close or you can mute. Closing means if the issue occurs again in a new version of the app, we'll open it. And so that means you'll be closing them again. If there's issues that you just want to ignore irrespective, mute them. So then they will not be open when a new version of the app comes out and you see the same issue again. Cool. I'm actually learning a lot from this. This is really <laughs> helpful. I'm glad I do this show. Phoenix had a question about, uh, let's say, uh, crash reports and people's data. So mm -hmm. I want to identify the user specifically to address the issue. So I need the user information in the logs. Is there, is it possible to make Firebase send the user info in crash reports? In Crashalytics, we provide fields where you can set user IDs. We encourage you to use them. They appear in the crash reports. You can search crashes by user IDs. I do want to caution you on one thing. Make sure you review terms of both the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. There's only some identifiable information you can send, so keep those things in mind when you're sending this uh, information. A lot of our users send anonymized uh, user IDs so that you know, you're know you not sending identifiable user information to Crashalytics. Right, that's a good call out. Um, sort of we have similar questions that come up about analytics events and right. wanting to be able to identify individual users. And uh, it's a good idea to check out the terms because um, there's a, that privacy aspect. Right, yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I don't, okay. Our next question is, after migrating from Firebase crash reporting to Crashlytics, is it necessary to upload ProGuard mapping files with Gradle? They didn't see anything in the documents or in the mapping files. Does Crashlytics handle this internally? So when you uh, link your accounts, uh, we just followed the same Gradle plugin that we used with Fabric Crashalytics. So your mapping files were getting uploaded before and they get uploaded the same as right now. We handle all this transformation internally so that you as a user don't have to worry about uploading them to a different location. Cool, good to know. So Carl wants to know what parts of Firebase, if any, can be used in desktop or non-mobile games and applications? The thing is, Firebase is primarily uh, for mobile applications. So it isn't really for native desktop applications. I've definitely seen um, some people try to make this work because you could theoretically do something involving like uh, if you have your own server, you could uh, ping that and you could use the admin SDK on your own server. So. You have that sort of as a go around, but uh, most the, the features are designed to work on mobile and uh, web at this time. But we're always taking feature requests. I'll link to that below as well. We really appreciate uh, getting questions like this because then we know what our developers are looking for. Great. Is there anything else that you think uh, people should know about Crashlytics? Maybe there's like common things that you see come up or. Um, one of the great features we have is logging non-fatals, which is very often, you know, you might catch an exception, but you might still want to keep track of it. So I encourage you to use non-fatals, 
uh, that way you can keep an eye on where you end up in unexpected situations even though it might not crash the app and that's especially relevant for games yes yeah um, that makes a lot of sense that's huge if you ever look at like um use in the app store or something like that of course if an app is just closing that's a big deal but sometimes you'll just see people talking about like unexpected behaviors right. of the app and that can be much harder to track so it's nice to know that Crashlytics has your back on that as well so is there one common question that you see coming up all the time with people when they ask about Crashlytics yeah so the question normally I get asked is hey if what is Firebase Crashlytics and it's fully ready to use? And the answer to that is yes. We've built the required features uh, you know, that exist in Fabric Crash Analytics in Firebase Crash Analytics. So we strongly encourage you to come check out, link your apps, and start using Firebase Crash Analytics. Yeah, it's good to know. It's, it's ready to go. Yeah. Thanks so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate having your help answering these questions about Crash Analytics. My, my pleasure. I loved answering these questions. And thank all of you for asking questions. We really wouldn't be able to have this show without you. So if you have a question about Firebase, be sure you're hitting it with that hashtag Ask Firebase so we can take a look at it and maybe you'll see it on a future episode. And if you like the content that you see here, be sure to subscribe to the Firebase channel to check out all the other cool content that we have. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on a future episode. Bye. Bye. Um, I don't really think my feelings have changed that much. I mean, I really don't care about this plant. I do care about other plants, but not this one.